have been reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. Though I cannot well explain the how of it, it would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul. But never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, though the Sahagin had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity, that they might stay the encroaching darkness. To most, it is but a fairy tale, yet recent events have given me cause to wonder. Could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown, but I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Uriange's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otimus? Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Baldessian. What of them? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, t'was observed that the isle had ceased to be. Tis postulated that a magic was evoked, like in power to Ultima. Twelve preserve. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. my lord, but these orders, I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution.
You must have gathered by now that Tataru is given to exaggeration. As you can see, I am quite well. Ulda, on the other hand, is not. This riot was anything but an isolated incident. There is a restlessness in the air. Tensions long simmering are at last threatening to boil over. Ulda is a nation infamous for the great disparity between the wealthy and the poor. The majority of the populace accepts this state of affairs because they believe that every man bears responsibility for his own lot in life. To an Uldan, money is the foremost, and some would say the only measure of a man's worth. Small wonder that the wealthiest wield the greatest influence. So where do the refugees fit into this social hierarchy? What place is there for those who fled Alamigo and the destruction of the Calamity? Plainly, there is none. They have no wealth, no power, and no worth. To the Uldan way of thinking, they may as well not exist. Choosing to ignore their existence, however, is patently not an option. General Rauban and the Sultana understand this, which is why they ordered the Immortal Flames to provide the refugees aid and succor. Yet, none would dispute that the expenses incurred by this policy grow by the day, with no end in sight. This has prompted more and more Uldans to question their obligation to aid these worthless wanderers. While more and more refugees have come to resent their treatment at the hands of the sneering citizenry. The manner of Lord Lolorito's refusal to grant the Dolmen's asylum bespoke a disdain for all refugees, an attitude shared by the rest of the monetarists. And you may be sure they make no effort to conceal their opinions. It was only a matter of time before the refugees united in protest. Nor is it any surprise that some among them would ultimately resort to violence. <sighs> that the immortal flames should choose this of all occasions to engage in joint training exercises with the other grand companies. By the time they return, the situation may well have deteriorated beyond mending.